It's that absolute value is the distance from zero. It's a distance. Okay? If we keep in mind that absolute value is a distance, then the rest of this stuff will, should, fall, should make sense. If, it, if, you don't, if we don't keep coming back to the idea that absolute value is distance, then uh, the rest of this is just going to be pretty like, like why, where does this come from? Like, why are we doing this? The, the why piece like, for what we're doing, we have, you have no idea. It all comes back to the, this absolute value idea. Anything that's in an absolute value symbol is a distance. Uh, so when we're solving, when we have equations with absolute values, uh, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be finding how far an expression is from zero. Or better yet, what x's are a given distance from zero? This is kind of the like the like what are we doing? Wait, what's that? Uh, is it does that, is that given? Given, yes. This is kind of like the what. Okay, we'll talk about the how in just a second. But this is like what we're doing. We're finding, if I give you an absolute value, you're going to tell me what numbers are given distance from zero. So for example, if I say, what's the absolute value, if the absolute value of x is equal to 3, this is saying, find what x's are a distance of 3 from zero. So what x's are a distance of 3 from 0. You can start at 0 and go 1, 2, 3. I could go to the right. Or I could go here. It sounds, I'm not, I'm not trying to like patronize you. But this is exactly what we're doing. Okay. So when I crank up the when I crank up the volume here and I start changing things on the inside of here, you're always coming back to what values are a distance from this number. What values are a distance of this number from zero? Is what we're always coming back to. Okay. No matter how kind of crazy this may look, we're looking at what values are this distance from zero. Okay. In general, what we're gonna do. In general, to solve it's kind of like the how. To solve an absolute value equation, we're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to isolate the absolute value. Get the absolute value thing symbol by itself. Get whatever's inside the absolute value symbol by itself. Isolate the absolute value. The absolute value. Then we're going to write two equations. <clears throat> then we'll write two equations. If we have an abs once we get the absolute value of whatever it is by itself, we'll say whatever inside is equal to the positive value 
or whatever is inside is equal to the negative value. This represents this little example up here where I walk to the, think of this as walking to the right on the number line and walking to the left on the number line. Okay. It's as, it's as, I hate to use the word simple, but it's, it's, it's this idea. It's the idea of a distance can either go to the right or to the left. And we're going to use that idea to get two equations. So for these, like, for this basic one, like the one we talked about here, or like, say, our first example, if I say the absolute value of x equals 9, well, I'm going to, and once I've gotten the absolute value by itself, I'm going to say what x's are 9 away from 0. Or if I follow my procedure, I'll write two equations. What's inside equals positive 9, what's inside equals negative 9. Oh, look at that. I've already got x by itself. When there's just one thing inside the absolute value, life's pretty not too bad. That's it. Two answers. Why are there two answers? Okay, why are there negative and positive? That's a more important question. Because it's the distance from zero. We're coming back to the beginning. You can either go to the right or the left. Well, now let's, let's uh, make life a little bit more difficult. What if inside is not just one variable, but what if, it's, what if there's something more, like this r minus 7 here? Well, our procedure says, first, let's isolate the absolute value. Is this absolute value by itself on the right side, on the left side? On the left side of this equ equation, is the absolute value by itself? Yes. Here is the absolute value. Is there anything else going on? No. Once it's here, we'll write two equations. We'll say this expression could be positive 9 from 0, or we could have instead, we could have instead gone to the, we could have walked the left and said what's inside is equal to negative 9. Good question. So the question was, do we need to change what this sign, this r minus 7 to an r plus 7? Answer is absolutely not. No. We're going to keep what's inside the same. Whatever is inside the absolute value stays the same. It's whatever the distance is, since this is saying the distance of this expression is 9 from 0. So how can I be 9 from 0? I could go to the right 9. I could go positive 9 from 0, or I could go to the left 9. Or maybe this expression r minus 7 is equal to negative 9. Now, solve each of these, and we'll get the two values of r that would make this thing a distance of 9 from 0. Or if I say solve each of these one-step equations separately, I'll add 7, and I'll get one answer of r is 16. Or I could add 7 and get a distance of r is negative 2. Okay. Notice that in this example, I didn't just have one answer and made it negative. I didn't just get one value and then just change the sign. These are two very distinct numbers. We are not, in general, just going to get one and then just make it negative. That is probably the <laughs> most annoying mistake that you can make on my end, because no matter how many times I tell you, there's still going to be probably a good 25% of you that are just going to solve once and then make it negative. It's from past experience, which I, I want to break that trend this year. But Well, what happens here if we Ow. notice on the equations, folks, notice that the equations in this row, uh, the absolute value is not isolated. The absolute value, there's a lot of stuff going on outside of the absolute value. Okay. 
when we want to solve these, again, our first step is to get that absolute value by itself, isolated. Get it by itself. Mm -hmm. So before we do anything else, before we do any of this writing two equations stuff, we got to get the absolute values by itself. So for example, in our first expression here, we'll subtract get twice the absolute value of s is equal to 14.8. The absolute value of s is equal to 7.4. Absolute value of s is 7.4. So what s's are a distance of 7.4 from 0? Or we could just follow the procedure, write two equations. What's inside is equal to the positive distance, or what's inside is equal to the negative distance. Notice in this case, the only thing inside was our s. Therefore, we're pretty much done. Once the absolute value is by itself, we'll take what's inside is equal to the positive distance, what's inside is equal to the negative distance. Same game for the middle equation. Let's get the absolute value by itself. Add 5. 4 times the absolute value of t plus 9 is 24. The absolute value is still not by itself, so let's divide by 4. So the absolute value of t plus 9 is equal to 6. Absolute value is now equal to a number. Or this expression is a distance of 6 from 0. So what t's make this expression a distance of 6 from 0? That amounts to making two equations. What's inside goes to the, either the right 6, or what's inside goes to the left 6. From here, find t. All right, while you're finishing up, if I need to, uh, when we need to solve this one, most of you did a great job of isolating, isolating the absolute value here. You get 3 times 4x plus 2 equals 18. And we got 4x, absolute value 4x plus 2 is 6. Once you're here, that's the same as being here. It's the same as solving any of these up here. Once we get the absolute value by itself, make two equations. Make what's inside positive 6 from 0, or make what's inside go to the left, or make it go to negative 6. Okay. Now solve these t each of these two-step equations. So subtract 2. 4x equals 4, x is 1. Subtract 2, 4x is negative 8, x is negative 2. Okay. Notice again, I'm going to re reiterate. The solution to this absolute value equation is not just plus or minus 1. It's not just positive and negative 2. There are two questions here that uh, if you can answer successfully, then what we do today and what we do tomorrow and what we do the rest of this before break is going to be a lot. It's going to be pretty easy. If you, can, if you know when you can perform operations inside absolute value, when are you allowed to do things to the inside of absolute values equation? When are you allowed to do anything to the inside? Okay. It's like just the x and the value. Yeah, once you've gotten the absolute value by itself, then we can't even do anything. We can't even do anything to the inside until we've done, until after we've broken it into our two equations. So when can you do something to an absolute value that's after... you've made the two 
equations. Okay. You can't do anything to the inside unless you've separated into your two equations. Okay. I told last hour it's not it's not a bad it's not a bad idea to think of the absolute value like a bubble and you don't want to burst it. So you can't do things to the inside of the absolute value until it's been separated out. And you can't put you can't put things into the absolute value and you can't take things out of the absolute value. So I don't want to like distribute a number into the absolute value. I also don't want to like try to like pull things out of the absolute value. The only thing time I'm going to do anything on the inside is after I've made my two separate equations. Okay. The second the second question on the back side is probably one of the more the most important one. The why question. Why is this expression if it's inside absolute value equal to 8 or negative 8? Or why is anything inside an absolute value equal to two different numbers? If you can kind of understand that, then everything we do is, should at least have, make some sort of sense. Okay? Why, if we're solving absolute value equation, do we get two answers? Jack, why do we get two answers? Because, say that again? No, I, I think, I thought I heard, I thought I heard, I just didn't. Like, Repeat yourself. Like, because we never really calculated a negative number, or because we crossed that and then minus that. Okay, so the, you're you're right. So I want to know like even a little bit deeper. So why am I doing plus and minus, Dana? So we're finding the x values to make it zero. So then even even deeper. Why? Why are we getting two answers? Why are we finding those things? Why do we get two answers? Willie? Because there are two sides of the number line, and why do we care that there are two sides of our number line? Negative. negative okay, if the two sides are negative positive, why do we care about like both sides of the number line? Oh. Distance. From zero, yes, because you can go left and get or right and be the same distance from zero. It all comes back to that absolute value is a distance from zero. And distances. Um, and points and points to the right and left are the same distance from zero. I didn't like the. I'm just gonna say points, yeah. And any and points to the right and left can be the same distance. from zero. Okay. It all comes back to absolute value as a distance from zero. So just because I'm, if I'm a distance from zero, I can either go to the right on my number line or the left. As a lot of you said, there's two sides. We go to the right or the left. It's positive and negative. It all comes back to the idea of distance. It's distance from zero. And we're going to be kind of re rehashing that tomorrow. We talk about absolute, when we talk about inequalities, it's dis where the whole thing is based on it's where are things of various distances from zero. Okay?